What is up, everybody? Happy U.S. Open Week. It's the year's third major. It's kind of sad that uh, number three is already here. But let's soak up every second of it. Should be a great week. Should be a great golf course. Uh, I got my runner hat on today, so I got roped into doing a half marathon. You know, I was always very against paying other people to uh, run long distances, but I uh, got roped into doing it with some friends. So uh, that's kind of it's kind of been fun uh, training with everybody, seeing them bright and early in the mornings. But we're here to talk about some golf. So this year it's going to be held at. Pinehurst number two in North Carolina. Um, it's going to be a very difficult test of golf, and it's not going to be your typical U.S. Open setup, right? Typically, very long course where extremely thick rough, um, narrow fairways, and then you know if you hit in the rough, you're kind of just punching out. Uh, same with around the green; not a lot of creativity goes into the chip shots. Um, but that's not going to be the case at Pinehurst. So the fairways here pretty wide. You know they're like thirty-five to forty-five yards wide on average. Um, so golfers should be able to hit them at a pretty high rate. I think the last time it was held here, two thousand fourteen, the average driving distance was around seventy percent. But golfers do not want to miss the fairways. So um, if you do stray too far offline, you're going to be in the sandy waste areas, and it's really up to lady luck at that point. You're going to have some good lies and you're going to have some bad lies. They're just like little bushes where they're just going to catch and collect a lot of golf balls. Um, so you're going to see a lot of golfers kind of lose their cool based on some bad breaks off the tee. And then you're also going to have, you know, a lot of bad breaks on your approach shots. So the greens here, they say they're 6,800 square feet on average, right? That's pretty big for a PGA tour course, but they're not going to play that big. Um, these are dome shaped. So think of an upside down bowl. And there's no rough around the greens and everything slopes away. So you're going to see a lot of runoff areas. Um, if you've been on social media at all today, I'm sure you've seen some of the videos where golfers are sitting on the green. They just drop a ball on the green and it rolls 40 yards down into the waste areas. Um, so there's going to be a lot of bad breaks. I think, you know, mental fortitude is going to play a big impact. Um, on the leaderboard this week, um, water's only in play on one of the holes, the greens themselves, Lighting fast can be Bermuda grass. Original designer was Donald Ross in 1907. This was a major renovation done in 2011 by Corin Crenshaw. Overall, par 70s, so only two par fives. Um, it's over 7,500 yards, so very long course um, in terms of the par adjusted length. But I don't think it's going to play quite that long. Um, it's going to be very firm, very fast, even the fairways. So I do think accuracy is probably going to be more important than the distance. Personally, I like the total driving angle a little bit more. Gives you a little bit of both, uh, you know, accuracy and distance. And I think you're going to see a lot of long irons. Uh, even the Bombers are going to have a lot of approach shots from 175 plus yards. So if you want to look at proximity from those numbers, I'll talk about my expected strokes gain approach number here in a minute. Uh, both the par fives are over 580 yards. So those are going to be difficult to score on. Uh, the winning score here is usually very low. Um, in terms of under par, uh, I don't think we're going to see a lot of golfers under par this week and it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, I can't wait. So the, the cut rule is top 16 ties. So you're going to see smaller percentage of the field make the cut. There's 156 golfers in the field. Now, you know, maybe 20 to 30 of the golfers don't really have that much of a chance to make the cut this week. So, you know, maybe we see a higher six of six than normal. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of looking for golfers, good total drivers, good long iron players, um, good short game. Um, we saw Martin Keimer use the Texas wedge off the green here when he won in 2014. It'll be interesting to see how many golfers use that approach. I'm kind of hoping Victor Hovland does that this week because his biggest weakness has been around the green. So if he can you know, kind of follow that blueprint that Martin Keimer led, laid out, then uh, I think he could be good this week. And... Yeah, I think uh, the last three winners at Pinehurst number two have all been in the top five uh, for that week in scrambling and putting. So short game is going to have a big impact. Um, and yeah, let's dive into the model. So right now I have 6% weighted to off the tee, 6% weighted to total driving. So both of these kind of take into account accuracy and distance. Uh, and then uh, we have 12% to stroke gain approach broken out into all the different buckets. Um, the expected column here, again, if you're new to the video, what I do is I take uh, Data Golf's expected approach shot 
distributions for each golfer. So they'll calculate how many approach shots they think Rory McIlroy is going to hit from 150 to 175, right? And then I go and look at his strokes gain numbers from that certain bucket and apply it to all the, all the buckets possible to come up with this expected approach number. And so this is going to be based on each golfer's individual distance off the tee, as well as the length of each of the holes. So golfers that I expect to gain the most strokes on approach this week, Scheffler, number one, Xander, number two, Connors, number three, Hoagie, four, Finau, five. Now that's not very different from just the raw strokes gain approach numbers over the last 12 months, but um, yeah, it's interesting, right? Um, Rom's down there a little bit. I don't see if anybody's like really better than their playing Nikolai Hoygaards must be a lot better with his long irons and his short irons. Uh, same goes for, you know, Brian Harmon, something like that. Um, green's a reg at 3%. I have strokes gain around the green at 7%, strokes gain putting at 8%. I don't mind bumping the putting numbers up a little bit. And strokes gain around the green's a little tricky because – Again, you're not going to have that rough around the green. So you're just going to have a lot of tricky, tight lie situations. Golfers might decide to putt it. Golfers, you know, can get creative. So just, you know, standard around the green might not be as important this week. If you want to look at scrambling from the fairway, I don't mind that approach. Then we have 3% to birdie better, 3% to bogey avoidance. So now course history, this is more event history. So this is the last five years at the U.S. Open. And then this rating here takes into account the last five years of the U.S. Open and then the last five years at all the majors. So it's kind of a combo of the two. So golfers that have played the best um, at the U.S. Open and at the last uh, five years of majors, you have Rory, Xander, Rom, Scheffler, Morikawa, Hideki, Brooks, Zalatoris, and Bryson. Kind of round out your top numbers there. Um, the miscellaneous stats this week. So we have course fit. This is just straight from data golf. They kind of look at what it takes – to play well here and apply that to the stats of the individual golfers. Um, based on what I'm seeing, I think they're kind of weighing distance a little bit more than I am this week because they have Bryson, Dean Burmeister, Gordon Sargent, Roy McIlroy, and Benny on five of the longer hitters in the field kind of rating out as their best course fits. I don't have a weight to this, but if you do want to bump that up, you certainly can if you are an RG Premium member. If you're not, appreciate you watching the video. Hit the thumbs up for me if you don't mind. Okay, strokes gain on long and difficult courses over the last two years. Um, I get these numbers from the rabbit hole of best birds. We have a deal with them going on right now. If you want to check it out, um, just let me know. I can send you the link and you'll get a discount. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, number one. Rory McIlroy, Xander Schauffele, John Rahm, Max Homa. Uh, stroke gain in strong fields. So kind of the same thing as you know most majors or most long and difficult courses, but just strokes gain when the field's really good. Rory, Xander, Scheffler, Tommy, and Hovland. And then strokes gain on tough approach courses. So, again, it's going to be very hard to hold these greens, to hit them in regulation. So golfers that have played the best on courses where it's really difficult to hit the greens. You have Scheffler, Xander, Rory, Wyndham Clark, Colin Morikawa. A lot of the same names, you know. Um, then we have the form over the last 10 weeks. We have the form. That actually goes into the model as a weight. So the short term is going to be last 24 rounds or the last three months, whichever comes first. The midterm is going to be the last 50 rounds or the last six months. Long term is going to be the last 100 rounds or the last 18 months. I am starting to weigh it a little bit more towards the short term than the long term. But again, you have the choice if you do want to download the model, you can customize your ratings. Now, one thing I like to do um, when it comes to betting is once I'm done with all my weights, figure out my ratings, uh, go through and manually adjust anybody that I want to bump up or down. And I'll come over here and I'll look at the odds, right? And I'll see, okay, Hatton's looking pretty good, right? He's number seven in my model, uh, five to one to finish in the top 10, two to one to finish in the top 20. Uh, I don't know if he can win. So I don't know if I want to bet 66 to one to win, but I do. I think do, do, I do think there's value in the top 10, top 20 number. So I'm, I'm going to place a bet on him. Um, you know, Bryson and Morikawa probably going to be my two outrights for the week. I do think Scheffler, it's his tournament to lose, but I just can't bet him at three to one. This is hard for me to do in a field of 156 golfers on a course where some of it comes down to luck, right? You can get a good lie. You can get a bad lie, you know, a couple of bad lies for Scheffler and, you know, maybe it costs him the tournament. So I prefer chasing Morikawa and DeChambeau at higher odds. 
but I'm also going to check out the winner without markets, uh, winner without Scheffler markets, just because he does scare me. So you can get Morikawa at 12 to one uh, without Scheffler, and you can get Bryson at 16 to one without Scheffler. Both those available on FanDuel right now. I'm probably going to split my outright bets. So say I'm betting a hundred dollars total on each of them. I'll do 50 on the outright, 50 on the winner without market for for Morikawa. Same thing for Bryson. That's kind of how I'm approaching it, just because Scheffler does scare me. And what that market is, is if you just take Scheffler off the leaderboard, so Scheffler wins and Morikawa finishes second, then you will cash that winner without um, Scheffler bet at 12 to 1. Okay, let's get to the overall rankings. Uh, oh, one other guy I want to mention, uh, Aaron Rye rates out really well for me. If you look over here, his odds, I mean, 12 to 1 to finish in the top 10, 5 to 1 to finish in the top 20. I think he's plus 175 to finish in the top 40. So I'm going to be using, uh, doing some placement bets on him as well. At the very top, we have Scheffler. He's expensive. He's going to be high owned, but he's got five wins in his last eight starts, 11 straight top 10s. Hasn't finished worse than T31 since October of 2022. And the pricing is so soft this week on DraftKings. Like, let me sort by the point per dollar ratings. Look how many great plays there are in the 6Ks. Henley, Sebez. Then you got Hatton and Connors in the sevens. You have Rye, Norin, Straka, Steve Kim, Keegan Bradley, Benny on, Dean Burmeester, Glover, Scott, Harmon. I mean, all of these guys. Great, great options this week. That just makes me want to play more Scheffler. Certainly, you know, Xander projects very close, which surprised me a little bit this week. But still, I just, how do you not play Scheffler? You know, I like Xander. I'll play a little bit of him in MME. Probably going to be naturally underweight on Rory since it will be overweight on Scheffler. And then the rest of the 10Ks, I mean, Rom hasn't been great in the two majors this year. He's dealing with that cut between his toes. That worries me. Um, Brooks Kepka, never count him out in majors, but. You know, 20% ownership at 10K is kind of tough to get behind. Then you have, I mean, I do like Bryson. I'm going to bet, bet Bryson outright. I think uh, he'll have, but I, I kind of like him more in the outright market just because I do think he has a wider range of outcomes than most will this week. Because I do think he's going to have a specific game plan. He'll probably be more aggressive than most off the tee. So that could work out or it could, you know, go up in flames. So I think he's kind of a better bet than he is dfs play but again if he comes out and wins you'll you'll need him for dfs anyway so i'm, I'm hoping he wins uh morikawa 9400 rates out number four in the model the short game was carrying him earlier in the season over his last three events he's gained nearly 24 strokes ball striking so the ball striking's back he's a great total driver great long iron player the short game has been so good all year he has two majors already three straight top four finishes Three straight top 15 finishes the U.S. Open. I mean, how do you not like him? And you can play him with Scheffler. It's really easy. Um, that's kind of what I'm planning to do with my main lineup. Start with those two. And then you can come down here. You can get Henley, Sebez, Rye, Noren, Straka, Steve Wickham, any of these guys um, to round out your lineup. So I really like the way those lineups look, starting with Morikawa and Scheffler. You have Hatton at 7,800, number seven in the model. Again, I like him for a lot of reasons. I've heard a lot of podcasts kind of talk themselves out of playing Hatton this week. I don't agree with that. Everyone's saying, oh, he loses his cool on the course. Yes, he does. But he's gone on record many times saying he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and it helps him get it out of his system. Like he'll have these little blowups, and he says it'll just – you know, get out of his system, and then he can focus on the next shot. So I don't think just because the guy gets frustrated means, you know, we can't play him on a difficult course. I think you know, maybe showing some of that frustration and getting it out might be good for him. So I love Hatton. Gains in all four of the main uh, strokes gain categories. Love Hideki at 8K. I think that's a great price point. Uh, Ludwig just continues to play well each and every week. Uh, he is dealing with that knee injury, but T5 last week at Memorial. Love Tommy. Anytime you get him on a U.S. Open – course he's been pretty consistent recently he's another one of those guys it's just you know accurate off the tee precise with his irons really good short game i think he makes a lot of sense i'm considering betting hobland as my third outright just think he can follow the Keimer blueprint and kind of just save himself from having to chip a lot uh henley at 6900 i mean 13th in the model so cheap look at these numbers so good total driver of the ball mostly accuracy driven one of the better 
approach players in the field, one of the better guys around the green, putting this year, top 25 over the last three months, six months, um, back, two top 15s at the U.S. Open, good form all year. How do you not play him at 6,900? I do think this price uh, or this ownership number will come up a little bit, but still love him this week. Uh, Cam Smith really struggled in the live event leading up to the U.S. Open. That worries me a little, but I do think this is one of the better U.S. Open setups for him because it doesn't require a lot of distance and short games, definitely a premium. Wyndham Clark's been struggling. He's going to be low owned. Uh, Corey Connors, top five ball striker in the field, probably. Um, the putter is always a concern, but I think he's very safe. I think he can easily make the cut for you at 7,200. Tigala, I really like Tigala. So I was looking at this. He used to be like a short game specialist and that he would just gain a ton of strokes on and around the greens. He's still having a good year putting. The around the green games basically abandoned him. And yet his over the last 24 rounds, he's top 15 off the tee and on approach. So like the ball striking has gotten so much better this year. If you can just have recapture some of that short game magic, I think he could not only, you know, pay off this price, but I think he could be, you know, in one of the final groups come Sunday. JT. The irons and around the green games bag just all comes down to the putter. Don't have a strong take on Homa. Finau, I'm fine with. He just continues to be very good with the irons. He's gained 16 strokes on approach in his last three starts. Norin, he's got top 25 finishes in eight of his last nine events. This is kind of a link style course, so I think you're going to see a lot of European golfers play well this week. Uh, Benny on one of the better guys in the field off the tee, been playing consistent all year. I'm not playing any Cantlay. Uh, love Siwoo Kim. Look at these numbers. He's gained off the tee 32 of his last 33, gained on approach in nine straight, gained around the green in seven of his last nine. If he just has like a, if he has a positive week putting, I think he can finish in the top 10 at 6,800. Seabed is one of the best short games on tour. Very good iron player as well. If he just drives it well, I think he's going to have a good week. Um, Lowry with the 85 on Sunday, Memorial. Um, yeah, he was in my showdown lineup. So that was fun. Um, tends to play well at the majors. Aaron Rye, again, a guy that I really like this week. If you look at his stats, good driver of the ball, lead iron player, hits a ton of greens in regulation, improving short games, gotten better in each of the, the different time frames. Doesn't make a lot of bogeys. I think that's going to be very useful this week. He hasn't played in the U.S. Open since 2017, which is kind of wild. But um, other than that, he's been you know, really good. So I do like him. Burmeester is a bomber, so I think he has a wide range of outcomes if he's going to be aggressive off the tee. Uh, Straka, just top five machine, fifth, eighth, miscut, fifth, fifth in his last five starts. Pretty impressive. Way too cheap for his recent form. Nobody's going to play Zala Torres. I always play him in majors. Don't necessarily love the way his game has been recently. Adam Scott late add to the field. I think he's made uh, 92 consecutive starts in the majors now. Incredibly impressive. Uh, Brian Harmon at 6,900. He's been playing a little bit better. The Irons have been good recently. I think it's a good U.S. Open setup for him. And he's got a lot of like high finishes of the U.S. Open. And he's got six straight top 45s. Um, remember, he contended one year. I can't remember if it was Aaron Hills or one of those. Uh, Sung Jay's playing better. T12 or better in four of his last five starts. If you want to look his way, kind of think it's a good setup for him as well. Don't have a strong take on Day, McCarthy, Minwoo. Uh, Tom Kim's been playing better. I'll play some of him. Probably not going to play any DJ. I do like Billy Horschel. So he won in Corrales, then made the cut, then three straight top 25s. You look at the stats, he's kind of been solid all around. So I like that. I think Glover's an interesting bounce back candidate after he missed the missed the cut his chalk last week. I like him a little bit more than Hoagie just because he's better around the green. Spieth, I'm off of Spieth. The, the wrist is just really messing with his approach play. If you look at the numbers, they it certainly backs that up. Harris English is a guy that I do like at 6,700. Just loves U.S. Opens. I mean, look at this track record the last four years. He's just been consistent. He's one of those guys that he can gain eight strokes around the green and five strokes putting in one week. So I do like those types. Kind of McKenzie Hughes kind of rings or fits that mold too. If you want to look his way. Um, I think he was kind of in the mix at Corey Pines a few years ago. Um, had the bad Sunday. I think his ball got like stuck in the tree in one of the par threes. But uh, yeah, so so the guys that can just gain a ton of strokes with the short game are definitely going to be making my player pool, especially the cheaper ones. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. I also have the tee times, round one tee times here. So if you see a wave advantage, 
Um, I have three different weather forecasts up in my PJ First Look article, which is free for everyone. Also has course history, course preview, key statistics that I'm looking at this week. So if you want to check that out, please do so. Uh, I also tweeted out the link to that uh, if you want to check out my Twitter. But yeah, so if you see you know a wave advantage one way or another, it's an easy way to kind of sort through it. Already got the tee times loaded in here. So appreciate you joining me. This is a longer video than usual, but I'm excited for the U.S. Open. Uh, manifesting a good week. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna have a big week. Uh, let's do it. Good luck, everybody. See you next week.